Hello and welcome to the OpenMX video tutorial series. In this video, we will be discussing part 2 of modeling latent growth curves with OpenMX. Specifically, we will be modeling exponential growth. Standard linear growth curves are useful when we have data as seen here. In a previous video, we modeled this system with a latent growth curve, the model that you see here. This latent growth curve is useful for modeling linear growth. When we use this model on our data, we got the average fit line that you see here. This fit line, or trend line, seems to describe our data fairly well. However, many growth patterns in nature are not linear. In fact, quadratic, or exponential growth, is quite common. As you can see, there is an upward curve to this data. Thus, if we wanted to fit a trend line, it should look something like this. As you can see, the trend line also curves upward along with the data. To model this curvature in the framework of structural equation modeling, we have to move past our standard growth curve by adding one more latent variable. This new latent variable, which we will call C for curve, introduces a quadratic or exponential term to the model. All the parts from the linear growth curve are still there though. We still have a latent intercept term with loadings fixed to 1, and a latent slope with linearly increasing loadings. What is new, however, is the curvature parameter. This parameter models the exponential growth component of our model. The loadings from this latent variable to the manifest variables are also fixed. Instead of being linear, however, they are the square of the loadings for the slope term. In this way, we are able to estimate quadratic or exponential effects. Now let's run this model in OpenMX. First, we load OpenMX with the library function, and then we read in and inspect our data. By looking at this summary, we can see that the mean of our variable does not increase linearly over time. In fact, it seems to increase exponentially. This would warrant us using a latent growth curve with a curve parameter. Now we specify the names of our manifest and latent variables. Notice that we have added a latent variable, C, to this model. This will be our latent curve term. The data for this example was generated from these parameters. Let's see if our model can recover these parameters. First, we're going to create a new model. We're going to call this model LGC, and it's going to be a RAM-type model. Next, we are going to specify our latent and manifest variables. Next, we specify our A matrix. Just like in the previous video, each value of this matrix is fixed. Also compared to the last video, we have a new column representing our C latent variable. The loadings from this curvature latent variable are the square of the loadings of the slope latent variable. Next, we specify the S matrix. This includes our error variances, latent variances, and latent covariances. Notice that I have fixed the error variances of the manifest variables to be equal. This is a common method used in latent growth curve modeling. The rationale is that, given that this is the same variable being modeled over time, it should have the same error variance. This constraint allows easier estimation of our model. Next, we create our filter matrix and our means matrix. Notice that we have a new latent mean for our curvature parameter. Now let's run this model and inspect our results. Notice that we only have one error term estimated. This is due to our previous constraint. If we look at the estimates for our latent variables, we see that they are very close to the true values which generated the data for this model. Thus, it appears our model did a good job at picking up the true parameters of the data. Just like in previous videos, to test the significance of these parameters, we can create new models in which we set these parameters to be zero, and then test these new models compared to our original model. These two models set either the mean slope or mean curvature parameters to be zero. We can see that both of these models fit our data significantly worse than our original model, indicating that these parameters in our original model are significant. 
This concludes this video on modeling latent growth curves with a curvature parameter. Thanks for watching.